Hello, happy new year, happy 2023. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Biden's new income-driven repayment plans. Um, there's not much news moving forward yet, besides we're waiting for the Supreme Court hearing on the 28th of February. I will certainly be coming uh, and reporting on that. I, I, I'm very eager to actually listen to the entire Supreme Court case. I don't know if you know you could do that off of their website. They record their entire cases. I'm eager to listen and report back to you all. Today, I'm having a little morning coffee chat here. Um, I do want to report um, about this new expanded spending bill. I, I don't know if you recall right before Christmas, but Congress was going through um, uh, basically providing budget so the government doesn't shut down again. And of course, the Federal Student Aid Office didn't get any increases, uh, which means they're expected to roll out a new income-driven repayment plan, revamp their entire website to make everything standardized across every servicer, and have really massive projects on no budget increase. So I'm curious to see how that ends up getting executed. Um, so I worry with all the different program updates and, and forgiveness programs that Biden's trying to execute on, without increased um, spending and support, uh, the servicers are going to make errors. So watch out for errors. In fact, we've been seeing a lot of errors and I'm gonna actually do another video right after this um, that I will make sure to connect to the end of this video on case studies on how we've helped borrowers um, whose servicers have made some errors and it's essentially almost preventing them from closing on a house because they're not getting the right documentation and how we can help cure for those issues and solve them. So that's gonna be in the next video. But meanwhile, let me um, talk a little bit about Biden's new um, income-driven repayment plan. So uh, the final date in which it will be released is unclear at this point, but the reason it's such a monumental program and I wanna discuss it and talk about it is because um, if the student loan 10 to 20K does not pass, uh, Biden does have, the Department of Ed, I shouldn't say Biden, the Department of Ed has authority to create another uh, plan, repayment plan based on a person's income. And this has already been legislated by Congress with very vague language like make an extended repayment plan that, it's not, it's not technically extended, but let PR borrowers pay over a longer amount of time and pay a per, based on a percentage of their income. And it was the par, Department of Ed's responsibility to execute on how those programs would be laid out. And so they created the first program where they made it um, 25 years and 15% of your discretionary income, which is a formula. And they defined that formula, which was 150% of your of the poverty line. And the poverty line is, um, is established annually by the US Department of Agriculture for a lot of food and, and food relief programs, food stamp programs, all that require um, the guidelines from the U.S. Department of Agriculture on what that poverty line is. So basically, Department of Ed took from that and said, okay, 150% of poverty. So let's say a single family right now this year is around 20,000. It's around 19 something, but let's say it's around 20 just to make math easy. 150% of that means it's around 30,000. So if you make anywhere 30,000 or below, essentially your payment's zero, right? That's how they come up with the payment plans. If it's anything above that, then 15% of that formula goes into um, what you, they and then they divide by 12 payments, right? Over 12 months, that's what how they establish your payment. But um, since the Department of Ed has the authority to change the way they build an income-driven repayment plan and define that, they can say, hey, instead of making it 150 times the poverty, we're going to make it 225 times, which is more than double. So let's say the poverty line for one person is still 20,000. Uh, so basically 225% means you have to make $42,500 in order to even have to make a payment as a single person. So that literally means they can increase the base to make a payment from 30,000 to 42,500. And um, they essentially, it's, it's such that if you're a moderate earning American and you have any amount of debt that's greater than $5,000, you can essentially get the payment reduced through this new payment plan, right? Obviously, it depends on how much you make, how many dependents you have in various things, but the program is being written so it's 
like an alternative to loan forgiveness. Like it, it's, it's loan forgiveness through having a more generous uh, definition of what more generous definition and also understanding of what you have to pay back monthly. So not only are they going to raise this from 150 to 225% of poverty for the formula, another thing they're going to do is instead of 15%, the first program started 15%, then later Obama came in and made programs that made it 10%, right? So whatever that poverty line is, uh, the difference times 10%, they reduce it. And now Biden's thinking about talking about reducing it to 5%. So it's literally one third of the payment is one third of what it was when the program was established in the 90s. And then Obama came in and established different programs that made a 10%. So now it's literally being cut um, for, to a third of what it was when the program was established. So it's essentially uh, incentivizing in many ways, incentivizing people to take on more debt because they could just pay less of it back, right? And then, of course, no interest. He's also talking about no interest accumulating. So, like year over year relief. So, for example, if you enrolled in that program that year, and let's say you're fully your full ten year payment, let's say it's five hundred dollars, but you qualify to only pay a hundred, that four hundred will automatically be relieved year over year. Right now, the program isn't like that. You accumulate a balance and it's relieved at the end of the 10 years um, or the 20 years, depending on who your employer is, right? So those are some really, really big changes to the program. Um, I wanted to talk about that. I also wanted to talk about, for those who met, missed the temporary expanded public service loan um, forgiveness, uh, there is uh, still an IDR uh payment adjustment. It's called account adjustment, IDR account adjustment. We call it the IDR waiver, which is huge because we've had some borrowers come in who have been paying for the duration that they can get the relief. They're just like, oh, well, I was in forbearance for a bunch of years. I don't think I qualify. But actually, they let you count up to three years of forbearance. So a lot of people coming to us, surprisingly, are getting a lot of debt, qualifying to get a lot of debt relief. So if that's you, just know that that's possible under the IDR waiver. The IDR waiver is even bigger than the PSLF, temporary expanded relief, because there's so many more people that qualify. You don't have to be a public servant. So I want to um, reiterate that. Um, again, if this, if this information is interesting to you, please check out the next video I'm going to make on the case studies of how we've helped people, uh, how Loan Sense has helped people whose servicers and they may have also committed errors. We just don't know don't know about the er all the different errors that were created, but essentially um, is potentially going to may to have disqualified them from being be able to buy a home because they're getting the incorrect documentation, how we're able to cure those issues. That's going to be the next video. If that's interesting to you because you're going to buy a house and you have student loans, I'd highly recommend that video. I'm making it to share with loan officers so they understand that. Essentially, just because someone has a lot of student loan debt and isn't getting the right documentation from their servicer, that does not mean they need to be declined for a home. It just means they need somebody who knows what they're doing, hence, like like us, to help them come in and um, solve the issues to get the documentation according to the guidelines of what the borrower needs so they are able to close, okay? So do not feel demoralized if your loan officer or lender does not know exactly what's happening on the student loan side. I'm just plugging in my, my laptop plug came loose. Let me plug that in a little better. Do not get demoralized if your lender does not know exactly how to retrieve that documentation. Their area of expertise does not lie on the student loan side. It lies on the mortgage side. So we're here to support in any way we can. And of course, happy to work with any lender and loan officer to achieve those results. Um, I hope this information update has been really, really helpful. There's a part of me, I, I need to go get a whiteboard so I can start writing out some numbers here for, for the visual, um, for the visual learners of us. Um, again, happy new year. Uh, please share this content. Uh, if you believe anybody could benefit and like this, if you like it, and I wish you all an amazing start to 2023.